Afternoon, folks. We're ready? Yep. Yes, thank you. Okay. I've been briefed by the Bureau of Meteorology this afternoon and senior officers of our emergency response team. Uh, I can confirm that Tropical Cyclone Yahtzee has now entered Australia's Cyclone Watch area and a Cyclone Watch has been issued uh, this afternoon. And we expect to be moving into full Cyclone warnings around lunchtime tomorrow. Uh, the Cyclone Watch has been issued for the area from Cairns to Yapoon. All local disaster management groups in that area have been activated and as a precaution we are in fact preparing uh, in areas as far north as Cooktown and as far south as Mirriburra. All of the models, uh, I'm advised, all of the models of this cyclone are all consistent. They all say that we are facing a very large system and that that system is intensifying. It is expected uh, currently forecast to be a Category 4 cyclone off the coast by uh, Wednesday morning. Uh, we are, it is heading on all models directly west into the Queensland coast uh, and, as I said, currently predicted to be a Category 4 off the coast by mid-morning Wednesday. It's expected at this stage to make uh, landfall or to cross the coast uh, anywhere from late Wednesday evening to early Thursday morning, so sometime overnight on Wednesday this week. The most likely place that it will cross, uh, according to current models, is the area between Innisfail and Mackay. We are taking precautions, as I said, from as far north as Cooktown to as far south as Meriburra, but the, particularly uh, the region that we are focusing on the most is the area between Innisfail and Mackay. We expect to see gales in that Innisfail to Mackay region uh, of more than 100 kilometres an hour by mid-morning on Wednesday. That means that uh, we need to be making as many preparations as possible in that region in the next 36 hours. To that end, some nursing homes uh, will begin as a precaution making evacuations in that region this afternoon. We are encouraging people in that region to take this very seriously and to make sure that you are stocking up and preparing yourselves, your homes and your family for a very significant event. I, we've also been doing uh, significant work today uh, on the possibility or the likelihood that this event will be accompanied by a significant storm surge that will cause flooding on coastal areas in that region. Uh, mayors uh, have for some time done very comprehensive mapping councils in that area uh, to identify what might be at risk if there is a storm surge. The Bureau's modelling today indicates that this is an event likely to be accompanied by a significant storm surge. So in addition to the effects of a cyclone, we are preparing in that Innisfail to Mackay region now for potential flooding of low-lying waterfront areas. I'll be uh, on a phone hook-up later this afternoon with the mayors in that area, but the best advice that we can give to people in low-lying waterfront areas uh, between Innisfail and Mackay is that they start to give consideration to possible relocations sometime on Tuesday. If people have friends that they can relocate with, they need to start talking to them and making plans for themselves and their families. Uh, on a few other things, uh, the Whitsunday Islands, uh, Hamilton Island has started a partial evacuation uh, of guests on the island. Uh, other Whitsunday Islands are currently considering their evacuation plans and likely uh, to begin that process tomorrow. Uh, all ports from Cairns to Mackay uh, will be closed uh, by tomorrow, late tomorrow afternoon. This is a very serious threat. We have to take this very seriously and we are preparing for it. In addition to a very significant cyclone, possibly one of the largest we have ever seen in Queensland, uh, we expect to see this uh, event uh, become a significant rainfall event in areas to the south and surrounding where it crosses the coast. That means we can expect very significant rainfall, in some cases up to a metre, into catchments that are already very saturated. We are currently doing modelling on what that might mean, particularly into areas such as the central and western areas of Queensland. This is such a large system, the Bureau does not expect that it will dissipate quickly when it crosses, as you've seen uh, Anthony do today, but for that rainfall to continue very significantly into those catchments, which, as you know, we've already seen very uh, significant flooding in. 
So we are doing everything we can to prepare in the couple of days that we have. Uh, we have deployed resources across the likely affected areas. Uh, Swiftwater rescue uh, teams have been deployed into the major areas, as have other rescue teams and additional police are being deployed into this region today. This is an event that we have to take seriously. Uh, I know, as many other Queenslanders do, that uh, cyclones can at the last minute turn off the coast, and I certainly hope that that's what this one does. But the Bureau advises me in the most serious terms that all of the models, all of the modelling right now says this is going to cross our coast, likely sometime in the next two to three days, and it may well be one of the largest and most significant cyclones that we've ever had to deal with. The most likely area that it will fall into, as I said, Innisfail to Mackay, uh, these are very highly populated areas. So we will need to take every precaution and make every preparation, and that is what we are doing, and we are encouraging residents to do exactly the same. Do you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, thank you, Premier. Uh, as has been our practice and as, as has been our underlying principle for the last six weeks, personal safety is the key to this event. Um, we ask people to take whatever action it is necessary to protect themselves and their loved ones. Relocation should be considered by people who are in low-lying areas. This is a very, very serious threat to the safety of our coastline and the safety of our community. Certainly there are a range of, of uh, preparatory things that people can do. Uh, they are the same as for uh, Anthony, that is to ensure that people are stocked up with necessities, making sure that batteries, torches, uh, water, uh, foodstuffs, those types of necessities are in the home, uh, ready to be used. People need to be uh, self-sufficient or be in the position to be self-sufficient for a couple of days following and during this, this uh, very, very serious event. Uh, thank you. When would you expect to, or would you expect to, have to force people to evacuate at any stage, Brent? Uh, that's not currently on our um, agenda, but uh, I have uh, overnight last night declared uh, the Townsville and Mackay regions uh, disaster uh, regions for the purpose of ensuring that police have the powers they need if they believe in the interests of public safety that uh, relocations need to happen. At this stage, uh, we are encouraging people to prepare for this event. We will be able to give uh, much more precise uh, information tomorrow in uh, uh, after the next round of modelling on the cyclone once it gets a bit closer to the coast and when we've overlaid that information with the information councils have about the likely impact of a storm surge. Is this a case of go early and go hard and get that message out, what you're doing here? This is a very serious threat. Uh, I can't uh, un underestimate the possible threat uh, to people who live in this region. But it's equally important to make sure that we're taking every possible preparation. Uh, look, I hope that we're wrong. I hope this cyclone turns around. I hope that on Thursday and Friday we're all breathing a big sigh of relief. But I would rather that people and their families uh, were inconvenienced for two or three days by moving out of home than finding themselves in a potentially life-threatening situation uh, on Thursday because they didn't take the right precautions. Uh, so we're certainly uh, looking at not only a significant cyclone, we are looking at a cyclone that will be uh, associated with a storm surge on coastal areas, which could bring significant flooding with it. And then we are looking at that rainfall incident moving inland into the central and western regions that could bring further flooding uh, immediately after the cyclone. So the next, uh, the next week is shaping up as one that will require a lot of work from our emergency people. And I just ask people, just as we've seen in the last four weeks, Please cooperate with the warnings. Please cooperate with police and emergency workers. Uh, we're doing our best to keep you safe. What is the Bureau saying about the rainfall? Is, how far south is it likely to come? This, because of the, the way that cyclones rotate, uh, they uh, will see more rainfall and more uh, wind uh, to the south of wherever it crosses. So obviously it depends on exactly where it crosses, uh, but we will expect to see rainfall uh, anywhere within 100 kilometres, about two to 300 kilometres south uh, of wherever it hits. So we do expect... Uh, that's why we're preparing uh, for potential flash flooding and other events, not cyclonic, but nevertheless have to be managed as far south as Miraburra. Have you been given any assurances by, from the Weather Bureau that uh, we won't see significant rain in the southeast given the flooding that's happened down here in the last uh, few weeks? Uh, certainly the current advice from the Bureau on the current forecasting of this cyclone uh, is that we wouldn't expect to see significant rainfall as a result of it into the southeast. But of course, this cyclone could 
end up coming further south and we'll know that uh, better tomorrow and the day after. But on current forecasting, that's the case. Given the strong winds for Wednesday, would you consider shutting schools or We will have a much better idea tomorrow, depending on where this cyclone, uh, how it tracks overnight, where it is likely to make a uh, land crossing and uh, where we're likely to see gale force winds. When we have that information, we will be, uh, every school in the region has a phone tree and every uh, preparation is being made to advise parents as quickly as possible about uh, when schools will be shut. Of course, unlike the most recent events, we are now back in school time and we will be making uh, every necessary preparation uh, to make sure parents know what's happening with their child's school. Are you advising people not to travel into that zone? Probably. <laughs> Premier, yes, we are. Obviously, we'd ask that people defer travel into the, uh, the primary zone uh, and certainly into any of North Queensland at the moment. Um, I think that, that it would be a very, very sensible um, uh, concept in terms of trying to protect all of our people. Um, in particular, we're concerned about tourists who aren't used to uh, the conditions in this state and we would ask that um, the tourist industry give good advice to tourists who may be considering that type of travel. And at this stage, people who aren't in low-lying areas, should they be thinking of staying in their homes with provisions or moving into evacuation centres? No. Um, certainly with cyclones, shelter in place is the primary underlying principle. Um, with the housing that's been built of, in the modern era, ever since uh, we've had a series of cyclone events in the uh, 60s and 70s, um, building codes are such that housing in those areas are, are built specifically to withstand the rigours of, of cyclonic winds. They are much better uh, sh sheltering in place. The only reason we're um, advising people in low-lying areas to consider possible relocation is because of what may be significant flooding associated with the storm surge uh, rather than the winds of the cyclone, if you like. So the rain falling on the catchments, is that the catchment for the, the Dawson or Fitzroy? Is it around that central? Potentially. Uh, on the current tracking, uh, this uh, cyclone is scheduled to hold its formation for some time and to deliver significant rainfall. As I said, it, the Bureau is indicating it could be as high as a metre uh, in some places and the central highlands and then further into the western districts uh, are the most likely at risk at this stage and, as we know, those catchments are already very full. So uh, there are a number of uh, aspects of this event yet to play out. So places like Emerald and Condamine are all we couldn't rule out further flooding in areas that have already experienced significant flooding in the last four weeks if this cyclone uh, behaves in the way that it's currently predicted to do. Should SEQ Water be releasing some water supplies from Wyoming, drinking water supplies from Wyoming? There isn't, at this stage, uh, that has not been uh, the, sorry, at this stage, there is no indication that we can expect this sort of rainfall into the southeast, but that's something that will be monitored every day. Uh, there are a number of mining companies who I know are impatient to get back and be fully operational and we want them operational as soon as we can because they're big employers. But we also want them to do that in a way that is environmentally responsible. We will not be giving a blanket uh, uh, permit for every mine to uh, dewater their pits. Uh, we need to test that water. We need to make sure of its uh, issues like its salinity and its contamination. And we will not be giving a blanket permit for mines to empty sal highly salinated, potentially contaminated water into drinking waterways and to waterways that go onto the Great Barrier Reef. What we are doing is working with every single mining company individually. Many of them have already been tested and released, uh, but we will not be giving blanket uh, excuses or permits, if you like, uh, to these mining companies. They will be tested uh, and monitored before they can release any of this water. So I understand their impatience, but uh, we're going to put uh, environmental responsibility uh, at an equally high level. When should the next uh, briefing for the disaster management group from the weather group? The state disaster management group will meet at five o'clock this afternoon uh, when there will be some renewed modelling available for the group and uh, I'll certainly make that available uh, if there is any further advice at that time. And that the Weather Bureau will brief that group at that time? Yes, at five o'clock. Thank you. Okay.